All right, so we're doing another video on narrowing a front axle, the way that I do it compared to the way other guys do it, the pros, the cons, um, and um, yeah, we're just gonna go over a few things. So what are we working on? A uh, customer brought me three high pinion Dana 44 front axle housings out of 1978, 79 Bronco F-150s. These start out life roughly 65 to 66 inch wheel mounting surface. He wants these built to go in first gen Broncos, which are you know 66 to 77, um, uses the same wedge radius arm system, it's just this is too wide. So we are gonna narrow this down. Now, why would you use this housing? Well, number one, it kind of has a specific use. Being 78 and 79, they went to this cast wedge inner C style. Um, it really deters the Jeep guys or anybody that doesn't want to use the radius arm system. It just deters you from picking this up. Um, so that kind of specific use is actually good when you can find these $250, $350, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, so to get started, it's usually a lot less expensive option. Why would you change your factory Bronco axle and go to something like this? Uh, number one, the Dana 30 that came 66, 71, 72, right in that um, era. Um, the knuckle system on them is, in my opinion, garbage. It's open knuckle, but it's still use, utilizing king pins, tapered roller bearings and shims and you don't know how to set them up. It just, it doesn't, it's not great. And they are just a pain. They can be a pain to take apart, um, set up properly. And the knuckles and stuff like that can be somewhat hard to come by anymore. Uh, if you have the 72 to 77, you're gonna have a Dana 44 that is gonna look very similar to this when it's done, except it's a low pinion axle. And even those Dana 40, even though they're Dana 44s, they were still utilizing the smaller U-joints. So you are going, going to have to take that apart. And if you want to upgrade to larger axle shafts and whatnot, it can run you anywhere from five to $700 to get new axle shafts put in there, as opposed to something like this, where you can build it however you want. It's going to be a little bit stronger because it's high pinion. Um, and if you're willing to put in the time, this is, going to cost you less probably in the long run than upgrading what you have or trying to even find a low pinion Dana 44 because they are getting harder and harder to come by. And if you know anything about anything first gen Bronco, it's getting more and more expensive. So then the question becomes, how do we narrow something like this? This is six inches too wide for what we want. How do we get that down um, to the correct dimensions? So first things first, before you do anything, if you get the housing to this point, grab yourself a tape measure. Now, um, where I like to, what I like to do first is clean out between, uh, right at the tube where it meets the center section, the housing, um, clean that out with a wire wheel, wire brush, whatever. Just make sure you have a nice flat surface that's not you know, contaminated, has a bunch of grease and grime. And I like to measure from the flat part of here to the flat part of the, uh, the inner C. So right out, right out here. Get yourself a measurement on the front side, the back side. Obviously with the wedges, you're gonna be down just a little bit. Again, this is flat pretty much in a four to five inch distance. So again, get yourself that measurement to start with so you know exactly what, you, uh, what your starting point is. Again, this customer brought me three of these. I've measured the other two. They're off roughly a 16th to an eighth of an inch. So I like to just double check all that before I start because again, a 16th, an eighth of an inch, once you cut it just using certain dimensions, it's not gonna kill you. But again, if you're trying to be as exact as possible, measure, measure, measure before you even start. So once you get that measurement, now you're down to, okay, we're ready to cut this thing down. How do we do that? Well, one of the first options is blow out these rosette welds, cut them out, drill them out, whatever you have to do to get these rosette welds out of your way and pr 
press this whole tube and assembly out of here. Um, I don't do it that way. I've heard of guys that do it that way, especially if you want this high pinion center section and you're just gonna retube it for something else. If that's what you have to do, great. If you just like doing that to narrow axles, uh, axle housings, and you've got the system down, wonderful. Um, I think it takes a little bit more specialty tools. If you aren't careful, you can damage the center section. Um, and a lot of these tubes are machined down for an interference bit inside of here, which means you need to have access to a lathe or a machine shop. That's an additional cost and time um, outside of your own shop, especially you know if you're doing this yourself, that in my opinion is unnecessary. The other thing why I don't like doing it, especially if you're working on a dirty housing, this still has the gears in it, okay? Um, if I was taking this all apart, washing it, cleaning it, sandblasting it, and you know pulled the tube out and I was cleaning it, that's, that's where you would maybe be able to get away with that. If you're keeping the housing in this state and pressing this tube out, you need to clean that out really, really well because inside the center section where the tube fits in, it's silicone because otherwise you can, you can get, um, you can create a leak point if you don't seal that properly. So a lot of extra steps go into pressing this, getting this tube out, pressing it back in, um, making sure it's sealed, all that stuff. And if you don't have the press, if you don't have a way to get these rosette welds out, it's just unnecessary time, especially if you're gonna take it to a shop or do it yourself and your time may be valuable. So second option that you have, um, and I do this on rear axles, especially ones that I just wanna keep the housing ends uh, the same. Um, I don't wanna cut those off and put new housing on, uh, ends on. Um, but your second option is literally just to cut the tube. Now, sometimes if you don't have the right saw, if you're not good with a band saw, a, a you know, a porta band or a uh, sawzall reciprocating saw, making sure you cut this straight. If you're going to cut the tube right here, um, that's not as easy as it sounds sometimes if you're, especially if you're not taking your time. And again, doing something like that, just the setup to cut this straight, making sure your saw is straight, making sure the housing is straight when you go to cut it, then you have to make another cut um, of what material. You're either gonna cut it off this section or what's left in the housing. Then you're left with, okay, now I have two pieces that I have to put back together. Well, how, I'm gonna, how are you gonna align that? Now, a lot of the alignment bar systems that they sell aren't necessarily made for front axles. You would either have to make pucks to go in here or and i've done it this way where you're taking two pieces of c channel you're clamping it out here to try and keep this straight um, you can sleeve the inside of the axle tube but again what diameter is that you're gonna have to clean that tube out really really well because this housing they're 40 50 years old grease grime um, rust i mean it's going to rust because that your seals are inside your center section there's nothing protecting the inside of this tube so again a lot more time a lot more prep to then put those two pieces of tube back together put a root weld put a cap because now that is a structural weld right in the center and again if you're really good at that and that's the way you like to do it more power to you um but again i just think you're creating a lot more um a lot more things that can go wrong, a lot more room for error. So how do I like to do it? If you've watched my other videos, I like just removing the inner C off the axle tube. Um, especially if you're working on Dana 44s, Dana 30s, that's the way to do it. I know Dana 60s are a different story. I'm not gonna get into that here. We're just talking Dana 44s, and especially the 78, 79. So, Guys get worried on these axles because, well, look at this. It's not just the inner C is, is welded and, and all one unit with the wedges. Yeah, it is. But this whole system is still just pressed on to this, the end of this axle tube. You have about two, two and a half inches of axle tube inside of this. 
and you have one weld going around right here. What's the easiest way, in my opinion, to narrow something like this? You cut and or grind out this weld, take a sledgehammer, knock the inner C, hit, hit on the inner C, crack that weld, knock this off, come back your distance that you want to, put it in your bandsaw, chop saw, whatever, nice straight cut, knock this back on, clocked obviously in the right position, weld it back on. This is not a structural weld. Again, do it properly, preheat it, you know, do all the things that you have to. This is the least room for air way to do it. You do not need any specialty tools to do it either. You need a tape measure. You need a grinder with some cutoff wheels and maybe some flat discs. If you want to use grinding disc, go for it. You need a sledgehammer and you need a decent welder. If you have that, you can do this. It doesn't take any specialty tools. It, in my opinion, is the quickest way to do it, the least amount of room for air, and I think you're gonna get the best product when you're done. And if you're doing this in the confines of your own shop, uh, you are gonna save yourself a heck of a lot of time and a heck of a lot of effort doing it this way. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, if you have uh, questions, concerns, uh, Again, if there's another way that you could see doing something like this, uh, feel free to leave a comment, uh, like, subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.